Hey guys, just wanted to put this quick uh, video blog up and uh, let a couple of friends of mine know how the winemaking is going. Um, I don't know, this will probably start being a continuous thing because um, a lot of people have been asking me about the wine that I've been making, so uh, I thought I'd show you some of the recent projects. Uh, first up is the apple wine. Um, I'm sure I've got a name for this somewhere. Uh, all of my wines have names, but I, for the life of me, cannot remember what the hell I named the apple wine. Um, and I don't think, I may not even have even had a name for just straight apple. It might have been a name for apple something or other. Um, well, I, I don't see it here, so I'll have to, I'll have to come up with a, a name of some kind for it, but um, this is just a straight apple wine. Um, didn't really spice it. I don't think I might have spiced it with, uh, I might have used a, a little bit of uh, like cinnamon stick or something like that in secondary fermentation, but other than that, it's just straight apple wine. And I gotta say, uh, before I bottled it, I tasted it, and this stuff is fantastic. Uh, this really, like the apple is very forward. It's, it's very obvious that you're drinking apple wine. Uh, and that's what I was always sort of afraid of, was that um, as the alcohol content rose, um, you might lose the, the flavor of the fruit that, uh, that it was made with. But that is not the case. Um, this tastes like apple wine. There's no confusion in your brain when you when you taste it. It's 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 sweet, uh, it's full bodied. Uh, it'd make a great dessert wine. Um, I did age this on oak chips for about two or three weeks uh, and that's that gave it a, a, a little bit more body, um, kind of a slightly softer uh, flavor, but at the same time um, it, it, it's really it's really one of those tastes that's very mature, you know. Um, as I said, it does taste like apple wine. It does taste like apples. So if you like apple juice, you're 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 gonna like this. Um, but the the alcohol content is definitely there. It's not like an apple cider um, because ciders are a little more beerish. Um, this is really like a like a, a good mellow sweet white. Um, but like I said, the 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 body of it is 100% apple. Uh, so this stuff is great. Uh, that one gallon batch made about five bottles. This was the, the project I was teaching my brother how to make wine because uh, he'd been asking me to, to show him how to make it and I thought, well, I've never done apple and apple's probably a, a simple wine to make and it turned out to be relatively easy. It's the kind of wine you could make in no time. Um, not including the cost of bottles, all the, the materials for this uh, for this wine were all purchased at the 99 cent store. Literally this this five gallon batch of wine probably cost about uh, five twenty eight uh, to six dollars for the entire like one gallon five bottle set. So if you have the patience it's certainly a hell of a lot cheaper and you get just the the kind of wine that you want. Now by comparison this is the second one that I bottled and you can see uh, it's more of a, a rose color uh, as opposed to the, the very amber color of the apple wine uh, and this is kind of an experiment in wines normally if you were making uh, a blended wine uh, you would probably not start with the multiple flavors together unless you had made the flavors individually and you were sure, you were certain that you liked them um, but I'm stupid <laughs> and, you know, willing to do just about anything without proper preparation. So, of course, um, I just went off half-cocked and decided to try it and figured, well, hell, if it doesn't work, then, you know, no harm, no foul. This wine is primarily made from uh, Concord grapes, which I got from my brother's backyard, uh, apple juice, which I got from the 99 cent store, uh, and what was, oh, pomegranate which I also got from the 99 cent store. They had some pomegranates that were still healthy and were cheap for, you know, for like two or three for a buck. So I grabbed a couple of those just to give it, uh, you know, a, a little bit of kick. And surprisingly enough, the pomegranate is really what changes the flavor in this. Um, the pomegranate adds so much bite. Uh, 
but it's a really great flavor. Um, you know, if, if you're if you're like me and you like the sort of sweet tartness uh, of pomegranate, you're gonna love this wine. Uh, that being said, um, had I been smart, I would have made an apple wine, a pomegranate wine, and uh, a Concord grape wine, and then simply blended the three together once I was certain I liked the, the flavors and probably would have only blended two of them together. Um, but I love experimenting uh, and this actually turned out really, really good. Um, the alcohol content on both of these is probably about 14, 15 percent. Perfect, uh, perfect placement. Um, these were sweetened with just uh, standard sugar. Nothing, nothing special, nothing unusual. Now the peach wine that's fermenting right now was sweetened with both uh, regular cane sugar and brown sugar. Um, so we'll, we'll see. That's probably going to have a little bit of a different flavor. Um, there's a lot of stuff that could have gone wrong with that big five gallon batch of peach wine. So I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just hoping it turns out okay. Uh, I'll probably be bottling that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. And uh, as per usual, I don't yet have a proper labeling system. So um, whereas the plum wine and some of the others that I've done were all in green bottles, the, the dry mead, which is aging, we're not going to open that till about 2011. Because uh, mead should have at least two years before anybody drinks it. So um, you know, April, May, June 2011 would probably be a good time for that. Um, as I said, for, for these, I've gone ahead and put them in clear glass bottles, uh, and we've got the gold cap for the apple, uh, and the red cap for the, the blended bunch. Um, right now I don't have too many wines, so it's pretty easy for me to tell which wine is which, um, but I've got to start working on a labeling system. I've got names for pretty much everything now, so, uh, I've got to start getting up some, some simple labels that... I can put on them if I'm going to be giving them away, uh, or that I can, uh, you know, just easily put on and take off uh, if I'm going to be reusing the bottle later on, which I will be doing for uh, a lot of these. So um, that's just, like I said, a, a little quick update. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if I do uh, continue to do this, what I'll probably do is uh, actually walk you guys through the process of making the wine. It's super simple tons of fun uh, and coming up this spring uh, I've got five different flavors that I'm working on for gifts for people just uh, experiments and taste uh, we're going to be doing uh, a blueberry wine a blackberry wine a strawberry wine for a co-worker of mine who wants it ready for when she turns 21 so it's got two years to age uh, and a raspberry wine and then I still have to come up with one more flavor before uh, before spring falls out. So five one-gallon batches. Um, I will probably update you guys and let you know uh, how those are coming along and what the fifth flavor is. Maybe it'll be a surprise. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, just post a comment and let me know what flavor I should make. Like I said, this is all kind of new to me. I'll, I'll try anything once, except cherry. I don't, I don't, I don't eat cherries. Cherries are fucking disgusting. Alright, take care guys.